It was the ACDC frontman whose life was cut tragically short. Bon Scott started his career in Adelaide. He would have turned 71 this month. And to celebrate his life, former ACDC members have gathered in Adelaide for a special tribute tonight at the Gov. And they spoke with Stephanie Picconi. Well, I used to work for an agency in, uh, in South Australia. And I was a chauffeur. And these guys were looking for a singer. I can sing. <laughs> he may be gone, but one thing's for sure, he's definitely not forgotten. When I joined the band, I was 19 and Bob was 29, so it was like having your, your mad uncle yeah. playing with you, you know? Yeah. But, well, that's not that happen. You have your mad uncle playing with you. <laughs> this Sunday would have been Bon Scott's 71st birthday. What better way to mark the occasion than a good old-fashioned rock show? Kicking off in Adelaide, where Bond first made a name for himself. It's not a tribute show, so we're not letting Filippo put the, uh, put the shorts on or anything. He doesn't have the legs for it. And a walk down memory lane. Bond was always very um, conscious of how he looked. It, it was the, the fussiest guy I've ever known about his hair. Bond used to have this fringe when he was in the Valentines. It was like he wanted to get it dead straight. So what he used to do, he used to wash his hair, comb it down and get sticky tape and stick it down till it dried so it would be dead straight. Mark Evans joined the band in the 70s as a guitarist, earning a paltry $60 a week. They never asked me to join the band. I just turned up with my gear and that was it. After learning he'd made the cut, he had less than 24 hours to learn all the songs from High Voltage. He used to wear these awful red satin overalls on stage and he was eyeing them on the bar. And uh, I said, well, hello, hello, Bon, how you doing? I said, I'm Mark. He said, oh, yeah. And he said, um, what do you like at ironing, mate? I said, oh. <laughs> I said, yeah, grab this. And he's taken off. He comes back around the bar, walks straight past me, sits down with his mate, starts drinking. He said, oh, let me know when you're finished with those, will you? You're still ironing, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pair went on to become great mates. And Mark very quickly learned that Bon was a character larger than life. Bon was our front man. He was the guy, and it was like Angus was his like little crazy mate. But Bon was had that amazing presence. I'd walk into bars with him. People would say, "Oh, gee, your mate looks like Bon Scott." And I say, "Oh, a lot of people say that." <laughs> you know, and they wouldn't. It wouldn't be until they spoke to him that they pick it up. It was actually Bon because everyone expected him to be this big, big guy. He was about five foot five often full of surprises. We started the Baby Please Don't Go with that run-in, and then this thing come out. Bon, I mean, you know, when I first saw him, it was on the TV in England, and, whoa, you know, I'm just blown away. Despite not joining the band until after Bon had passed away, the experience changed drummer Simon Wright's life. I was in, living in London, and, uh, it, it, it was an advert in a music paper and they called me up and said, can you come down and play tomorrow? And I mm. said, well, I can't really, I haven't got any money, you know, I can't mm. get, get down there. And they said, well, don't worry about that, get in a cab and we'll sort you out. You know, I'm walking down the corridor at this rehearsal place and there's all these flight cases with ACDC on the mm. drum tech showing me down. I tapped him on the shoulder I said, you, are, you, are you kidding, right? He went, just gave me this big smile. <laughs> The last time I was in Adelaide was 88. There was a huge riot. There was a period where the police just had no control. Their authority didn't mean a cracker. There's a bit of a history with ACDC and riots in Adelaide too, because we did a New Year's Eve here once. Billy Thorpe kept on playing as he normally does, so we only got to do 20 minutes. So they cut the power on us, and the place went, oh, they weren't happy. It's more than, than just a band. They've inspired so many so many musicians and so many people. Getting the band together was the idea of guitarist James Morley. Logistically, it's a nightmare. It's, uh, it's like herding cats, getting everybody together in one place. It's, uh, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of hard work and, and planning that goes into it. They're now the biggest back-selling catalogue band in the world. And if you knock the Beatles into second place, that's, that's staggering. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should get Angus a call, what do you reckon? <laughs> he did push the boundaries to, to a, a certain extent and, and to, to the point where um, when he went, uh, 
I've got to be honest with you, I can't say it was a surprise, but it was certainly a shock. You can't really be gone unless you're forgotten. It's been going on for, you know, well over 40 years now. Who knows when it's going to stop? He left quite a mark, didn't he?